I have seen the pace of your life. The stress. The anxiety. The constant movement. Rushing from one place to the next. Chasing after your desires or running from your fears. I see how you struggle, striving to meet your needs all on your own. I see the burdens placed upon you and the burdens you place upon yourself. In the midst of this chaos and hurry, I am calling out to you to slow down. Be still and know that I am God. It is I who set the earth in motion. It is I who sustains you, protects you, and provides for your needs. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Trust in me with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid, for I will never leave you. Let your soul find rest in me and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. For neither death nor life, the present nor the future, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from my love. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world.
Thank you for joining us tonight in our weekly uh, mid midweek prayer time now here in United Evangelical Church on Jensan. So in this Zoom room are uh, UEC family and also a few people from the Life Group team of uh, Jensan Hope. So we welcome you and we praise God for your lives. And having you here is very encouraging. And for those who are joining us online, uh, at your homes, the comfort of your homes. We praise the Lord that you were able to make time as you will be praying uh, with us and for us and uh, for each one of us later. So uh, tonight we're going to learn about uh, how we can uh, get the most out of our life's troubles and pain. So if you are uh, going through a tough time, maybe the Lord... Uh, uh, has something for you tonight. So the best thing to do is to pay close attention to what God would be speaking to you tonight. So the question is, uh, what can we learn from life's troubles and pain? What are the things uh, that we can glean uh, from what's happening in our lives? And if we pay close attention to every detail of what's happening, you will see that God allowed those things uh, to happen in our lives are very good reasons. Reasons maybe na 
hindi pa masyadong clear for us at the moment. But eventually, uh, as the time unfolds, we would get to understand what God is trying to teach us or maybe what God is trying to remind us in this uh, toughest season of our lives. Of course, uh, we've been, uh, a lot of us have been in tough situations in our families, in our businesses, even in our ministries. I've, I've talked to uh, different pastors, uh, people I'm journeying with, no? and uh, same, same, same issues, same trouble, having a problem, uh, connecting to members because of, uh, you know, mga limitations that we have. But we praise the Lord for a decline of uh, cases for the past few weeks now. And there has been a decline. And so we're going to pray later. We're going to post the prayer items uh, in connection to this. So we're going to learn tonight what we can actually learn or glean from life's troubles and pain. So let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians. It's a letter to the Church of Corinth by Paul. In a very interesting passages, he reminded us of the reason why we go through pain <clears throat> and troubles in life. And to sum up everything that we can learn at a bird's eye view you know, that we can learn from 2 Corinthians chapter 1 is that God, God is our source of comfort. Now, he is our source of comfort. He is our savior and our sustainer. So let's look at verses uh, 3 to 5 and let's glean from uh, these verses and learn uh, uh, something that we can actually uh, be comforted with going through tough situations. So first in verse 3, he said that all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. In this verse, we get to understand that many times in life, we find comfort from elsewhere but God. We go to our friends, our families, or we Google things you know, of how to solve our problems. But we put God at the last, on the list. No? We only go to him if we, are, we have nowhere else to go. But here you would see that the source of all comfort is God himself. And he, here the Bible describes him as a merciful father. A merciful father. Mercy is best defined as not receiving something that we deserve. That is mercy. And uh, our merciful God sometimes withhold what we deserve. And to make us understand that there are things in our lives that are happening that for us to learn from. And if we are in so much pain or trouble or having a hard time, we could always run back to him because he is the source of all comfort. Not some, not majority of comfort, but he is a source of all comfort. And that's why all praises belongs to God. Where does your comfort anchors on? Where do you get your source of comfort? Where do you run to when you're in trouble? Where do you find peace? In the short clip a while ago, it was seen that we are to slow down and to remember that we are not God. We have to cease striving to be still. And know that God is God and we are not. And therefore, we are to surrender control to him. Surrender uh, all our worries, our troubles. Bring them to God because he cares and he has overcome the world. He is the source of all comfort. The next verse in verse 4 says, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So he comforts us in all our troubles. Not just some again, but not, not just majority of our troubles. But God, being the source of comfort, comforts us in all our troubles. And the Lord knows what you're going through. The Lord knows where you are right now. The Lord knows your pain. The Lord knows what you are about to experience. And sometimes he would allow that because he shouts through our pain. We get to see him and we get to cling on to him when we are at the rock bottom. He comforts us in all our troubles. For what reason? So that we can comfort others. 
Now, God comforts us so that we can be a source of comfort ourselves. And sometimes now we tend to forget that the things that are happening in our lives are actually not just for us to learn from, but it's for the people around us. It's a lesson that we can learn from uh, the Lord and through that learning that God allows us to experience. And of course, the Lord's comfort is there. It's us being a channel of comfort and blessing to the people around us. You would wonder why uh, you get so effective you know, when someone come to you, you know, when someone comes to you and asks for pieces of advice or maybe some, someone comes to you and is troubled having a problem of his own and you already experience what that person is, is going through. And therefore, you get to uh, comfort, to empathize and to give wise uh, pieces of advice to that person because you've already gone through that and you have already experienced the mercy of God. You have already experienced the comfort of God. Therefore, you are channeling that comfort that you have experienced from God to that person who is in trouble. Someone has said that uh, uh, we are uh, God. No? God does not comfort us to make us comfortable only, but to make us com comforters also. So when we experience troubles, our own troubles, our own pain, the Lord comforts us not just for our own good, lang, and not just for our comfortable, just as to make us comfortable or from that end, but actually it has a rippling effect for the people around us. Okay? And lastly, in a verse uh, 5, it says, For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. So the Lord comforts us through Christ. Christ is our greatest comfort. When you look at the cross, you will see that Christ has conquered all our pain and trouble, he has took them, exchanged hearts with us, telling us that we have already a victory in him. Because in Christ, there is newness of life. We have new passion, new pursuit, new love, new goals in life. And when we are in trouble, when we are in pain, we have a new comfort. And the word comfort there actually comes from uh, the same word used in the Bible when God was giving Adam a suitable partner, someone that would be a helper. And in the New Testament, the same word used to uh, describe the best help that God has given us, and that is himself. You know, in the form, in the, through the Holy Spirit, the parakletos, the comforter. And when you look at the picture of someone helping you as the greatest helper, it means that that person is greater than you. Because the person that is less than you could not help you. Only the person greater than you or in a higher position or in a better position can help you. And in this situation, we are comforted by God through Christ, you know, who is our savior, our sustainer, and our very uh, source of help in times of trouble. So when we suffer, of course, we suffer for Christ. Uh, the suffering mentioned here is about doing what is best, doing what is best for Christ, for his kingdom. When we suffer doing good, you know, like what it was mentioned in the Beatitudes, we, we get the comfort uh, in Christ. So if you are going through tough time, continue doing what is right, what is good, responding right, responding godly, because comfort is there coming in your life. And that comfort is coming through Christ himself. And he has been promising us that comfort again and again in the scriptures. There's one chapter in uh, the Old Testament I really love. It's found in Isaiah 43, where God was actually telling his people that I will never leave you. I will be there for you. And the message version rendered it beautifully. In uh, Isaiah 43, you know, verses 1 to 4, it says, allow me to read it. It is God telling his people, don't be afraid. I have redeemed you. I have called your name. You are mine. When you are in over your head, I'll be there with you. 
when you're in rough waters, you will not go down. You will not go down because I am God, your personal God, your Savior. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. Beautifully said. Well, that, that's, those are not just beautiful words, beautifully uttered words, but they were meant wholeheartedly by the Lord, telling us that when we go through life's problems, he will be there. He will be there. He is actually there. And Christ giving us a picture of him uh, being with us in our life storms. No? In, uh, in one account in the Bible where Jesus was actually sleeping in a boat where there's a huge uh, uh, squall no? that came that gave uh, a heart-pounding uh, trouble uh, to his disciples. And he was telling them, have faith. Have faith. I am with you in the storms of your life. And the Lord is with you in your life storms. So have faith. So tonight, are you going through a tough season of your life? That's something I would like to leave to you. If you are, then bring them to God. If you are going through something difficult in your life, you know, something that you know that you cannot handle on your own, even if you can handle them, bring them to God. Bring them to God. Because our merciful God is the source of all comfort. He alone is our sustainer, our savior, and we could always cling on to him. We could always cling on to him. Allow me to share uh, a beautiful song rendered years ago. Uh, in, uh, it's a rendition of Isaiah 43, and it was beautifully sang uh, by one of my closest friends. So allow me to share this song, and may it give comfort to you tonight as you ponder on what you're going through uh, tonight. So as you look at the lyrics, it's actually found in uh, Isaiah 43. The lyrics was taken from Isaiah 43 and gives us uh, a reminder and a promise of God being always there for you and for me. Them for my glory, he 
Shall we pray? Father, we praise and thank you for you are our everlasting God. Lord, we thank you because you have promised in your word that you will be with us despite the storms of life, despite the fiery furnace that we would encounter in life. You will be there. I pray, Lord, for those who are going through the toughest season of their life. I pray for comfort coming from you. I pray for guidance coming from you and protection and provision coming from you. But as they look up, they would always see your hand reaching out, sending help and love, and that they would be reminded that you actually never left them. I pray, Lord, that we would also learn from the things that we are going through. And as you have been comforting us, Lord, I pray that we can be comforters ourselves to the people that, would, that you would bring to our lives and even to the people that you are surrounding us right now. I pray that we can be channels of blessings, that we can also be the source of comfort as we overflow your love and your comfort to us, to these people who needed them. I pray, Lord, that you would sustain us. And I pray, Lord, that as we look up and be reminded of the beautiful cross, that saved us, that redeemed us. I pray that we could live this life afresh, living a new life in Christ. And though we are uh, traversing a difficult life uh, nowadays, Lord, I pray that we would always think of this as light and momentary compared to the glory that we would see and experience someday soon with you. Lord, I pray for uh, my brothers and sisters who are joining us tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would speak and minister to their hearts and to their need. I know that this is never an accident when you gather your people to pray. And Lord, be in our midst as we pray for one another, as we pray as a family, as we pray as a church, for uh, uh, co-ministers in your kingdom. I pray, Lord, that you will be in our midst. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for reminding us that you are our source of all comfort. You are our sustainer and our savior. Lord, all glory and praises belongs to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So my comfort to you tonight as you bring them to God because God is the source of all comfort. Allow me to share our prayer items before I end our live stream. And the people here in Zoom room can continue their prayer time. These are the prayer items for those who are joining us just now in Facebook. Uh, these are the prayer items. So do pray for a continuous decline of COVID cases in our country. As you can see, maybe in your cities, in your different cities, uh, the cases are actually declining. Uh, here in Jensan, we have uh, a few case, new cases each day. 
And soon, uh, we will not be required to use face shield. Na, so it's a sign of improvement. But let's continue to pray that it would really decline na, before the year ends. Na, ma, matapos na ang pandemic. Of course, the Lord is our ultimate healer. Uh, the Lord is sovereign. He knows what is to happen. So let's cling on to God and trust the unknown tomorrow to unknown God. So let's pray uh, for this one. Second, it's let's pray for humility and unity in our own churches, for our pastors and leaders. Uh, we are stewards. We're not the owners of the church or any ministry. Uh, we are but uh, stewards, and we are to really give our best as stewards. That is a definition of what success is. In the Bible, to be good stewards of what the Lord would entrust to us. So let's pray that God would give us a humble heart to see uh, that we are servant leaders and we will be united because we are serving one Lord uh, with one faith. So let's pray for that. Let's, uh, number three, let's pray for a progressive growth in churches that are actually doing biblical discipleship here in UEC. We are moving towards uh, the biblical mandate and mission, and that is to make disciples, to make Christ followers now, as we follow Christ. So let's pray that uh, along, along with us, you now there are also churches doing this. So let's pray that uh, God would cause the church to grow, not just by number, but uh, by depth. Because if an individual will grow in his relationship with the Lord as he follow Jesus Christ closely, of course, there will be growth in number because that person will be investing his life uh, on others as he goes along in his life's journey. So let's pray for those churches who are uh, answering the call of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 28 to make disciples of all nations. So let's pray. So if you are your church is doing that, do pray. We pray for your church. And if you belong in UEC Jensen, please pray for our church. We're doing uh, whole life discipleship this year and moving towards life on life discipleship next year. And last on the list, uh, pray for three families that would come to your mind. Maybe you know of a family who's going through a tough season of his life or of their family. Please pray for them. Uh, maybe you know of a family who just lost a loved one or maybe uh, in so much trouble in their business or maybe in relationships, do pray for them. Uh, intentionally pray for them. Uh, pray for their welfare. Okay? And don't forget to pray for your own family. Don't forget to pray for your own family. So I'm going to leave this here, uh, these prayer items, and I'm going to, in, to, uh, to just end the live stream. So the people here in Zoom room can uh, continue in our prayer time. So I'll just leave you be. May the Lord bless uh, the remaining days of your week here and make you fruitful this week so that uh, you can always bring glory to God in whatever circumstance in your life that you would face. So God bless you and have a fruitful uh,